All right, guys, we're back again with another podcast. We've got a special guest on today, Joey De Cordero, um, the owner and writer of Joey's Journal, um, really awesome men's lifestyle blog, um, which obviously I'll leave a link for. You can check out yourself at the bottom of the video. Uh, I just wanted to say hi, and we've got a few questions actually to ask you, Joey, today. Hi, nice to meet you, James. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, all good, all good. And it's really nice to have you on the show, actually, because we actually planned oh, to do good. this a bit before, didn't we? And it's, it's taken yeah. a little while, so yeah. really glad to have you yeah. on and actually get some of your ideas because your website's quite awesome, actually. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, yeah. Yeah, it's got such a professional feel to it. Oh, thank and you. And we'll have a few images coming up on the podcast <laughs> as well, just so others can uh, view. But basically, the idea is we're going to ask Joey some questions um, and it's hopefully going to help inspire some other maybe new bloggers that are not really sure how to go about it, how other bloggers' experiences have been, um, and yeah, basically go from there. So let's get started. So first, Joey, um, and actually before we get started, obviously you've got your blog, haven't you? You've also got Instagram, yeah. um, YouTube, so you are managing multiple platforms at the same time, uh, which we'll go over a bit later. But in the beginning of your blogging journey, um, can you share with us like the pivotal moment that basically sort of made you decide I want to go i want to go through with this um you know this, this is the way that i want to go you know with my blog and start to grow it i think the pivotal moment that kind of inspired me to start blogging um i actually used to um well actually my background is actually fashion studied at a college and then a communications degree like a media degree um so that kind of helped form the basis of like my skill set um and then I used to do like a few internships in the fashion industry. So in PR, like marketing, and then assisting as a stylist assistant to personal stylist, um, as well as editorial. So um like the perfect just, training, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I guess it's um even though they're like kind of um in intern sort of roles, but they help kind of give you an understanding of that media industry and obviously publishing journalism kind of are part of the fashion industry a huge part of it mm -hmm. so um just through um attending events um just through my contacts i guess that i built through interning um i remember that moment which i thought oh how does blogging you know help as a whole like it's a big sort of new kind of um industry which is just kind of growing it's like booming actually so i remember when no one knew what these new type media types of people were turning up to fashion week um i was wondering who are these people you and know that's they're interested in smartly them. dressed people very trendy very fashionable like hanging around outside london fashion week tents and being photographed on the street by like celebrity photographers and to me i thought that was quite exciting because you know the actual traditional press were actually um kind of i wouldn't say like annoyed but i think that they knew that they were under threat by this mm -hmm. new breed of media which they just came out of nowhere and there were these fashionable people posting their looks on their own websites independent blogs and then for me i just thought i've always loved fashion i'd love dressing myself um you know i'm always inspired by by trends i see on the catwalk but also what's going on on the streets of london mm -hmm. um you know it's just always kind of that i think that for me that's where trends come from they come from the street and then that kind of trickles down onto the catwalk and then Okay. those trends sort of like so seeing people's styles out and about and then yeah that, that kind of create inspires the designers like whatever they see on the street and then when you look through these like publications even online they'll say london fashion week uh this season um this is what we've seen on the street and that kind of inspired me that i just thought well these people are finding a way of communicating you know style mm -hmm. but in their own way um i've also written you know freelance mm -hmm. um as a guest blogger and contributor for um an online publication called yahoo style it's like a search engine but oh, they're nice. kind of like a news you know like a news uh online news wire like a bit like google has a news feed yeah yeah, yeah. Who, 
so um that was kind of a good experience for me to kind of practice my writing before actually jumping in on the deep end and then mm-hmm. finding a way like my own like writing style for my blog and that's how because that takes a time like, doesn't it to actually find the style yeah. that you want to um so i know we've had a bit of a discussion over this before on a previous call uh, but that's really interesting then so you're sort of inspired with the people you saw out there the people you know like you said yeah. they're sort of standing outside getting and it's like it's actually quite funny you mentioned the new age media because there was a bit of a switch wasn't there from you had to be yeah. like on a film set you know a really famous actor to suddenly people creating their own blogs and social media and getting the same amount of attraction <laughs> you know people exactly yeah wanting to take pictures of them um yeah no, that's a really great answer especially if people just sort of wondering about getting started and not sure not sure yeah when. um so quest the second question is going to be actually um so you've been shaping men's lives in terms of uh lifestyle fashion travel uh yeah. by your blog which i really do recommend going and checking out um it's very interesting um can you tell us some of the time uh, your blog or you know one time that you can really remember or maybe multiple times that it's sort of made an impact on other people perhaps you've got asked on the street by a family member a friend or anything like that um have you got any such experiences um it's for me i think it's mainly like strangers really mm-hmm. i mean are both kind of a mixture of both strangers and and friends you know um when i talk i think for me when i speak to strangers that i've never even met before like last weekend i went to um a family birthday party so during a dinner conversation i sat next to someone that i've never met before and as you just have the general dinner party conversation they like, oh so what do you do and you know that sort of thing and that's how it starts and then um when you tell them about it they go oh that's really great um i have heard of influence who's but they say oh i'm not in the stage of my life but i'm able to do something like that you're so lucky that you found something that you're so passionate about and really? you get paid to do it mm-hmm. you know um and they said that's such a great opportunity and when i tell them that you know it's sometimes i get to travel to the most amazing places to do a review of a resort or a hotel stuff like that like people are going oh my god like that sounds like the dream job and even though i just I work part time as well and then I kind of run my blog and you know my social media um people still think oh that's amazing like keep doing it and I said I always say to them as long as like people pay me I'll keep doing it and then one day if it all stops it stops but I'll just make the most of of you know like what's happening right now absolutely then, got to and I think a lot of people don't realize how much effort you've yeah. got to put into everything haven't you yeah. Especially with the type of blog um, that you have, you really got to keep up with the trends, haven't you? Obviously, yeah. I find it's quite hard, you know. Even for me, I think learning to hone those skills, um, mm. even like basic photography. Like when I take a picture, you know, these days you can do it on a smartphone, and it will turn out really good, depending like how how new your smartphone is. Mm. Like if it's the latest model, the photo quality is usually going to be quite sharp. It's good enough. But um, other than that, like even if I have to edit those photos slightly, I'd have to do it at home mm-hmm. on Lightroom or like Photoshop. So it's just kind of like learning, you know, the um, editing side of thing and that can be quite challenging. So it does take a lot of time. To oh, of course, of... I mean, the visuals are important, aren't they? It's, it's especially yeah. on a blog, it's sort of what gets people um, and especially, I suppose, the niche that you're in as well. Is, yeah. is there like a preferred sort of so I know you, you cover a few subjects, don't you? Which one would you say is your favourite out of, like, let's say, travel, fashion? Or have you got a particular favourite or are they all sort of, you, you know, you, um, you love them all? I think for me it would be men's lifestyle mm-hmm. um, and, like, luxury travel. Luxury um, travel, and yeah. then after, And then um, I've always liked fashion and there's a, you know, section on fashion, like... I, I saw you have a section on private jet as well. Is that like a genuine experience that you, you've you've got to go check out? Was um, we I had an introduction with yeah, yeah. Um, you know like an aviation company that runs a fleet of private jets. So oh, wow, um, it was kind of nice just to I didn't fly in one, but mm-hmm. it was just nice to kind of be included in in a, in a, in like an event yeah, to. Yeah to kind of get to know the actual marketing team mm-hmm. 
and also you got to meet the whole team and stuff as well yeah and then they were just talking about like where they were in their business and their vision for the future and how they were going to grow with like aviation so they actually came to me and just said we've got like um a launch event for our new fleet of like aircraft do you want to come down and have some drinks and just kind of get to know us and find out more about us and in future maybe that's something that we could work together on a collaboration so that would be like the dream yeah yeah oh i mean that, that's know, good like, isn't it? yeah <laughs> seen yeah. other you know i've seen other influencers you know once they kind of get to that point and you know i've seen on instagram that they are doing collaborations with private jets or airlines but um in aviation wise, i've only done collaborations with actual airlines mm -hmm. but it'll be nice one day to do the private jet thing which fingers crossed like be great absolutely and also another important thing is really i mean for them to approach you like that they must have seen either i suppose either like your some socials or your blog i don't did they tell you how that how they managed to notice you um i think it was on i think it was on instagram actually so you must have noticed something on there sort of checked you out further that must have been on instagram and then i just get like an email from their marketing guy at the company mm -hmm. um with a media invite so yeah they would have gone through i think most people go through the instagram yeah 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 so i saw from your instagram as well you sort of have your link tree don't you and then from there i went to your blog yeah. and um that's quite good you must have a number of subscribers on there as well so i noticed you got like the functions it functions very well doesn't it in terms of you know clicking to subscribe checking out photos yeah. Um, even some of the ways that your photos popped up, I was very impressed with the way that that sort of showing. Yeah. Did that take a long time to achieve? I know you've worked previously with developers before and stuff, um, which we'll probably go over on the next question a bit more. Yeah. But w was that sort of hard one to achieve? I think it was very hard to achieve. It's just because it takes a lot of time and effort to like create the content, and you always have to plan your time efficiently. So that could be one of the biggest challenges and you know when you upload things to the blog or the website it's not something that can just be rushed yeah 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 so i yeah. kind of like have to kind of um you do like a preview of the page and then you're thinking oh actually that can go there and this can go here or i don't think this text looks good you know in this place so it's kind of little little things like that really that you just have to be quite yeah, of course. So one of the things I actually quite liked with your blog is as you as you go down it, any any of the watchers that go through and check it out is, I like the way that you've moved everything around. It's not just your typical default blog of you know picture in the middle, writing picture, writing. You know, you, you've yeah, it's very interesting. It's eye catching, and it sort of makes you want to go through and read the rest of the article. The way that you've like arranged the pictures, yeah. it's almost like an artwork, I suppose. You know, like the whole yeah. post. Is that how you work with it? Is that how you sort of see it as well? Yeah, I just find like you know when you look at other like blogs and stuff i mean um or other websites um in terms of like you look at your favorite retail luxury retail re website mine's like the outnet or mr porter and you just mm -hmm. have a look just by out of interest just to see or oh, how how do they like communicate you know their imagery or how do they you know publish something in a certain way that it's eye-catching that you know it draws the eye that someone will go oh that looks great i'm gonna click on that page or stuff like that so you've done a fair bit of research then in even the, in the ways that you're putting the images on in the big beginning you know you make all the mistakes and you kind of like try and find your personal style that suits you that people can relate to and then when you're happy you just stick with that really because you know that you found your own signature kind of style of like oh, absolutely absolutely and talking about making mistakes actually leads me on to the next question to sort of overcoming challenges obviously you've run a blog you've run it for a while now have you yeah. ever had like or what would you say has been your biggest challenge so far you know something that really made you worry if you're going to be able to perhaps continue with your blog have you ever had any such issues and if you have how did you manage to overcome them uh, yeah. overcome them sure um so in like in any small business or being a freelancer like nothing's perfect and i would always say be prepared for things to go wrong because sometimes they do they're just unexpected and i think with me i think the first time something went wrong um i was just in a panic um so i i um my website actually went offline 
um lots of scary things happen for about a day or two which i just thought oh no this is good and it was actually right before milan fashion week i just thought oh no wow. that's awful because i'd sent out all of like my press requests to all of these marketing com- um, companies to say i would be in town for, oh, for no, the whole they would week. be trying to check out your website of course yeah exactly and i just thought if i don't have anything up there then i was just in so much panic so um what the actual issue was so i was on a really basic hosting package i was very kind of new to like the technical side of like running a website and blogs you know a lot of these people like myself are just content creators mm-hmm. but when it comes to the actual te- technical side of things it can be slightly tricky and if you're not a web developer um that was a challenge for me so when it went offline for a day or two i was really worried um i actually had um a very basic hosting package and i didn't really know the difference between a basic hosting package and a cloud package for like running a website and i think that's really important to know beforehand before you even like set up a website because so you'd you recommend doing a good bit of research into into... Of your functions of a website and if you don't understand that um you know when things go wrong i didn't know why or the reason why when they told me it was basic hosting packages have a limited capacity of memory that holds your data compared to a cloud that's got kind of a wider um disk space i think that's Mm -hmm. what they call it um and then because obviously i asked the actual hosting company oh can you just fix it for me like if I pay you extra, they go, no, it doesn't work that way. I was kind of like really shocked. They said, I'm really desperate. They said, we just, you pay us, we just host the website. That is it. You don't get any technical support. So you need to. It's not really what you want to hear, is it, when that happens? No. I was just kind of very close to like leaving, you know, to go oh, to wow. Italy for, um, for a week. Uh, I think it was, I only had like four days away from me leaving mm-hmm. and having this issue. I just thought it better hopefully be sorted before the time I leave. So I found um, a web developer in my local area just by suggestion from a friend because I said I didn't know. I said, this is, this has happened. It's awful. I don't know. I'm in a tight situation. I said to my friend, what do I do? They said, oh, there are these people called web developers or web designers. You just need to find one online or find someone that you, you trust. Or I called a few had a general conversation and told them what the issue was until I was I found someone I was comfortable with um, explaining the situation. I kind of just went with that person mm-hmm. and then they sorted it out within I think that same day towards oh, really? the end of the day. Yeah, and I was just lucky that I had a backup of my site. So I would tell everyone, make sure that you have a backup or even two. Yeah. Oh, that's such a good tip. Website data because yeah. if you don't have a backup, you can't restore it to whatever period you need to to get it back up again. And I was just so lucky because I just thought, oh my god, I've added all this new stuff recently. And if they do the backup to a certain period, that backup might not cover that period. So I just thought, oh, that's going to be a waste of of time. But this guy was amazing and managed to retrieve everything from present to like further back. And I was just so so lucky but yeah i would say wow. always be prepared for things to go wrong because nothing is nothing's perfect unfortunately oh, absolutely. No, that's, that's actually a great story of how you managed to overcome quite a great deal of um uh stress and yeah that's that's a really hard one and i suppose it's good that you've got because now you're used to work with your web developer don't you yeah i can call them up anytime i have an i you know like it's just that you have to have that trust with the web developer obviously because it's your work um, if something isn't functioning properly, um, they kind of know the ins and outs of your website because they've worked on it previously. So, yeah, I'm quite lucky to have call well, Yeah, so that, that's a, a good tip, especially as the backup one, because I don't know how many times, I mean, obviously we're, we're part of a hosting company as well, and the amount of times yeah. that you can tell people to take a backup and they do not take that backup, you know, they're yeah. thinking, oh, I think it'll be all right. But you just don't know, do you, when no. things can go horrendously wrong. And yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that is lucky. Right, so with that, so with travel being a large part of your blog, or, you know, at least part of your blog, um, how has it enriched the content of which you create as such? Your blogging content, um, Instagram content, YouTube content, even, so I've noticed you've got quite a cool video on there. Um, yeah. 
how, how has that helped in terms of travel? Because I know it's quite a big trending topic, isn't it? Uh, the yeah. actual travel topic in itself. Um, I think for me, I think how that's enhanced, like, my content. I think in the terms of, like, you know, when you tie in men's lifestyle to travel, I think they both fit really well together. So, for example, I could be given or gifted um, some clothes from a brand which might be resort wear mm -hmm. and then I happen to be I don't know flying somewhere like on the holiday somewhere like exotic and I just think to be able to put two and two together so you could promote the destination or going to but also the actual brand that's of clothing well, that's which smart. could be resort wear mm -hmm. for the beach mm -hmm. and I think when you tie that in together, there's an element of fashion in there as well. That takes a good bit of management, doesn't it, and planning for you to integrate them all. Make up that formula to make it more interesting because you're wearing the brand, you know, at uh, this location where you're doing a review and then you're styling the content. So if you have a photographer friend with you, you will try a few shots and maybe just say, oh, what about this piece, take off take off this and put this on you know and kind of just play around with like the lighting especially like i went to the maldives like on the press trip like last november mm -hmm. and we we're just we took a bunch of clothes like just in a bag and then just kind of like changing outfits sometimes um just to see if that would work mm -hmm. and so i must help having somebody there yeah um, it helps enrich ideas. the content, like tying in travel and men's lifestyle, as well as like the fashion thing. It just makes it more interesting, I guess. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's always better to bounce back ideas, isn't it, sometimes? Yeah. Especially if you've got somebody actually looking at you. It's sometimes different, in, isn't it, than looking in a mirror. Yeah. Um, you know, checking out the background, stuff like that. That's really fun. Do you have look at somebody, is, is this like a good friend you might take out with you? Or is it whoever's available at the time um, sort of interested? I try and go with a friend that, you know, that I've met before. I've never actually taken, you know, like strangers or freelancers before. Yeah, Maybe yeah. Well, if that might happen, you know, you just never know. But um, at the moment, I'm quite lucky because um, working in in media, especially fashion, um, I have access to like a few photographer friends. Oh, perfect. So I might say to them, well, I'm thinking of going to this place on a press trip are you available to help me with this content so um that's usually how it works and i prefer to always bring someone with me um you know to uh help me create the content and it just makes life easier i guess of course having and more engaging there. as well yeah you get more support and plus you can bounce ideas off each other and stuff mm. whereas i don't think i've ever done anything by myself the only time i've ever created content is when i'm at home well it's yeah. quite daunting isn't it doing stuff by yourself especially if you're out you know around people and like you know it's, it's quite hard so i have to do it myself sometimes and it's quite hard yeah. to set up a camera you know with nobody else there to sort of almost take the anxiety away you know like you yeah know, obviously not for everybody but it can be a bit especially when you first start <laughs> and you're taking pictures of yourself in front of other people and you're thinking oh god you know who's I find it quite funny, like, um, you know, sometimes when you mention taking pictures like in public, mm -hmm. but usually I would be with a friend that's got, you know, just using their smartphone in public. And I remember this place, particular lo location um, in the city, like, I think it's the St. Paul's and they've got like some very kind of nice architecture, mm -hmm. um, especially in the pillars of like St. Paul's or just on the outs outside of that building um just because it's just a nice kind of, of picturesque background it's just very modern clean contemporary as well as you of the classical kind of architecture on the outside of st paul's so it's just stuff like that but obviously because it's a very touristy place i remember like we were just taking pictures i think it was on the sunday of like looks that my friend and i were both wearing um, my other friend is a personal stylist and she has an instagram and she's very very active like on on social media as well as like taking outfit posts and stuff mm -hmm. so we were taking it turns to like take pictures and then you could see how annoyed people were walk, walking by they were just like 
looking at us, like thinking those people are just idiots. Pro probably, but they probably knew that they were influencers or bloggers. So they were just walking by, just letting us get on with that. And obviously, I just pretend I don't really mind if someone's like directly looking. As long as I get my picture, I'm happy at the end of the day. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> strong. Yeah, that's good. I need yeah, but... to post on social media, but if someone's looking and they're thinking, oh, those people are just stupid, I don't really take much notice, but you can see oh. how annoyed they are. Yeah, oh, exactly. So... I mean, people are very quick to judge, but if it was the other way around, I bet they wouldn't have the same courage to do it. You yeah. Know? Very quick to judge somebody, but wouldn't, you know, wouldn't go ahead and do it themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's excellent. So, um, actually, last last question got here um, is managing multiple platforms, um, because obviously you manage multiple platforms. You've got quite a large following. I think last time I checked, it's about ten k uh, followers on Instagram. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Your site obviously attracts a, <laughs> a good amount of traffic as well. How do you deal with managing multiple platforms? And is there anything that you could give to people in terms of um, some advice for them yeah, to be able sure. to do it if they're struggling? Um. I would say to be able to manage multiple platforms, yeah, it can be a challenge. I just say plan your time efficiently, but I, for me, I think you would always prioritize which is your strongest platform. And I think for, for me, it's Instagram. Um, Instagram, I find it's like um, a bit like your blog. Mm -hmm. But I, I also call Instagram, it's also, to me, it's like a second website yeah yeah i suppose it is yeah i mean it's kind of like a window to your website so, so for me i motion i find instagram is like i go with your your most strongest platform first to begin with and then kind of like in order you'd put which one is the strongest to the weakest so for mm -hmm. me i would probably go with the strongest the ones that are kind of easy to use i think tiktok i've just joined like not so long ago mm -hmm. and um i'm kind of just getting used to to, to using that before. takes a little while doesn't it well yeah i just wasn't comfortable at the beginning like learning a new platform but um i'm kind of kind of over that now i'm kind of mm -hmm. like really used to that so that's like my second one and then thirdly i think youtube yeah 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 and then all the other ones will follow after youtube like your facebook your twitter pinterest but I find YouTube, uh, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. I think for me are the the main ones which a lot of people are taking notice of now, especially brands. So, well, absolutely. I mean, it's all about the visual content as well, isn't it? Um, yeah. You know, with YouTube and the shorts on YouTube, TikToks, and the same sort of format, isn't it? Quick yeah. viewing, but like lots of quick viewing, isn't it? Yeah. So, so yeah, I did actually notice that you had a TikTok channel come up. So you've just started that, have you? Is that like Yeah. I just thought I'd be interested. Just thought it's I think with TikTok it's a bit more casual. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. posting. I think whereas Instagram's got a slightly different formula that I I find with Instagram it has to be presented perfectly. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. I I don't know why that is, but I find with Instagram you can just that sort of style of posting for me has to be perfect whereas There's a huge amount of competition isn't there on instagram so you have to really get it like you said perfect and then whereas tiktok um you can just kind of be a bit more relaxed about what you post in terms of like how you edit a video it could be like a very quick thing and then mm. you post it whereas instagram I, f I find i take my time a bit to think about what i'm posting and how how i edit something so um yeah that's how i how Excellent. i yeah, it, yeah. yeah. and uh, so finally i think before we finish off do you have any advice just general advice for anybody that themselves is looking to get into blogging obviously it doesn't have to be the same niche but anybody looking to get started um any sort of general advice that you would give to them that would be quite handy um I would say that when you get into blogging, firstly, just make sure that writing is your passion. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like like I said, when you see a lot of people starting blogs and it is a lucrative thing eventually when it grows. Um, but I would tell everyone, like, don't get into it and think it's just a, how do you say, 
it's like um a quick easy method it's not is it of earning money because mm. it's not like you will earn the money but like you know it takes time to grow your platform both on your blog and your social channels so um, i would think firstly like you know are you passionate about writing mm. um you know um do you enjoy like the basic technical side of things because you need to learn that and if you're you're not able to do the basics of technical um things to do, do the web website it will be really hard um and then social media i think for me um i took actually a short course uh of nice. uh, social media for like five days luckily through a business enterprise in my local area mm -hmm. um which was quite lucky to come across because uh you know the um business enterprise in my local area that helps startups or freelancers they approached me so they said we've got this five-day workshop um would you be interested so i did that and it just showed you how you can just create like a digital kind of strategy for your instagram um to be able to understand more about how you can reach more people or mm -hmm. if you're not following the right people and, and, and so on oh, and the certain times of when you should post and when you shouldn't um that really helped a lot yeah since then it's just been very kind of easy to um get to grips with like the ins and outs of instagram especially you know what what people like and stuff mm -hmm. i think is really important yeah, because there's a lot of sort of marketing to it. And really, by doing something like that, you're investing in yourself, aren't you? You know, yeah. not a lot of people will go, I'm just going to go do a five day course. I think oh, I'll put it to later. Is it worth it? But by doing that, you've given yourself that extra knowledge, which is obviously yeah. put you ahead of other people, um, you know, which is really interesting. Actually, I didn't know there were such courses. Um, <laughs> it might be something I have to look into. Yeah, myself. I mean, it's kind of I think it was called something like um, I think an introduction to digital marketing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and social media um improve, cool. improving like your st digital strategy i thought oh that could be interesting so yeah, yeah. i got to meet like a lot of um small business owners and freelancers um and then we got to kind of just kind of uh, meet everyone and kind of discuss like where they were in terms of like their social media strategy and how the reach can be improved and stuff so it did help a lot so i would highly recommend finding like a social media type course a short really? course and investing so, in yourself and your skills yeah you know, to, to better it off oh that's awesome well it's actually been, it's been really great talking to you joey yeah um, it's been thank great you for coming on the show it's sort of like my experiences and um i hope that others can take away from this like um everything that i've learned so far so um yeah it's been quite the journey um yeah well absolutely and definitely all the links are going to be in the description so do go and right. check out and especially do say website's yeah. a really nice one especially if you want to you know sort of catch up and I yeah know, imp improve your style a little bit it's a good one and yeah. it's just a good read anyway so make sure to go check that out i'll leave all the socials everything in the description for you as well again thank you very much for coming on i'm sure we'll call you back again for another podcast if you're interested uh, later in the future maybe even get you in the new podcast room um if we ever can of course and, uh, yeah, yeah that'd be great yeah that'd awesome be awesome thanks thank Joey. you so much thanks for having me today thank you